Neon Genesis Evangelion is an anime with a lot of clear allusions to mental illness. It's pretty well known that series creator Hideaki Anno was going through a lot at the time of series creation, so it's well accepted by fans that a lot of the series had taken influence from Anno's personal struggles at the time. That being said, a lot of fans have theorized that there is an even deeper reference to mental illness than may be apparent at first. Welcome back to Art Practice ASMR. In this video, we're going to be talking about the personality disorders behind Evangelion. Like I said at the beginning, Evangelion has never shied away from brutally portraying mental illness. That being said, a lot of fans believe that there may be an even deeper portrayal hidden within the show's main cast. This theory states that the three chosen children of Evangelion represent a personality disorder from each of the three personality clusters. This theory goes deep into ideas of psychology that may be hard to understand, so I'm going to try to break this down as understandably as possible, because this is actually a really interesting theory that I think has a lot of validity. So let me start by explaining what personality clusters are. Personality clusters are the way that disorders are grouped together. When disorders have similar traits or behaviors, they are grouped into clusters. Cluster A is disorders with odd or eccentric behaviors. Cluster B are disorders with dramatic or emotionally erratic behaviors. And then there is cluster C, which is all about anxiety or fearful behaviors. This theory basically states that Ray represents disorders in cluster A whereas Asuka represents a disorder in Cluster B, and Shinji would be C. Out of all of the disorders in Cluster A, Rei would represent Schizoid Personality Disorder, which means that she exhibits behaviors such as having a lack of interest or emotional attachment to social relationships. It also means that she would be generally apathetic, as well as having a very restricted amount of emotional expression. Now that we understand what it means to have schizoid personality disorder, let's see if it matches up with who Ray is as a character. Well, Ray does seem to be generally apathetic. She doesn't show too much emotion, and she also seems to distance herself from the other kids in her class, as well as the other children. To add some context from what the creators think, I'm going to read you a quote from Yoshiyuki Sadamoto, the character designer for Evangelion. Sadamoto said that an emotional change causes certain muscles in the face to tense, producing an expression. Rei is expressionless, but is it that she doesn't feel emotion, or that she is merely unable to express it? Meaning that Satomoto believes that Rei isn't just a freak clone with no expressions and no humanity, Satomoto believes that Rei is a person who has feelings, she just has a hard time reaching out to other people for whatever reason. This brings us into triggers. Generally, personality disorders have triggers or causes behind them, so let's delve into why we believe that Rei could have schizoid personality disorder. I believe that the best theory about why Ray acts the way she does comes from Amanda Wynn Lee, Ray's English voice actor from the original dub. Amanda Wynn Lee believes that Ray acts the way she does because Ray understands that she is expendable. Ray is one of many clones, so if she dies, she'll just be replaced with another Ray. This causes Ray to believe that she doesn't need to make new friends or build up relationships, because if anything bad happens to her, 
she'll just be replaced with another Rennie who would never remember any of those relationships she built. She believes that this gives Rey a lack of self-importance, and that's why Rey acts the way she does. I personally believe that this is a really solid theory, and that it could act as a valid cause for why Rey would have schizoid personality disorder. As for Cluster A, Rey's characterization only makes sense for one out of the three disorders in the cluster. However, Asuka's characterization completely makes sense with half of the disorders in her respective cluster, Cluster B. Just to refresh your memory, Cluster B is all about disorders with dramatic emotional and erratic behavior. As for Asuka, the disorders that make sense for her would be Narcissistic Personality Disorder, which is all about making several grand gestures for the sake of attention-seeking and an intense need of admiration. There is also a lack of empathy when it comes to Narcissistic Personality Disorder. The other disorder that makes sense for Asuka would be Histrionic Personality Disorder which is all about patterns of attention-seeking behaviors, which include but are not limited to being overly flirtatious as well as inappropriately sexual. Now that I've told you about those disorders, let's see if they make sense for Asuka as her character. As for Narcissistic Personality Disorder, Asuka is definitely known for making incredibly grand and over-the-top gestures. Those would be the moments when she needs to pilot the Eva alone to prove that she's better than everyone. Those would be the moments where she constantly takes people on in different bets just to prove that she's so much better than them. As for the lack of empathy goes, that is shown when Asuka interacts with characters like Shinji, who she has no respect for. She constantly berates him, makes fun of him, and calls him an idiot and she doesn't really care about how that makes him feel. To be fair, the lack of empathy isn't just limited to who she hates. Her lack of empathy applies to characters who she respects, like Misato or Kaji, where she just doesn't really have any respect for their personal borders. And that would lead us into histrionic personality disorder. The parts that I really want to focus on would be the inappropriately sexual behavior which is mostly shown through her interactions with Kaji, who she tries to pursue a sexual relationship with, despite her being 13 and him being in his 20s as an adult. Her histrionic personality disorder behavior is also shown when she kisses Shinji. People with histrionic personality disorder are shown to need a lot of different stimuli in their life, which could mean a number of different things, but I believe that the kiss that she shared with Shinji expressed that kind of behavior pretty well. She didn't necessarily do it because she liked Shinji, she did it because she was just feeling bored, he was there, and she was feeling particularly sexual in that moment. As for possible causes of Asuka's disorders, the show makes it very apparent that they mostly stem from her mother. Asuka's mother was a scientist at the German Nerve Headquarters, where she ran a lot of experiments with her daughter as the subject. This caused Asuka to detest being treated like a doll. After discovering her mother's corpse after Asuka's mother committed suicide, Asuka began to suffer from a ton of abandonment issues, as well as just feeling like she wasn't good enough, that her mother left her because she was not a perfect child. And then we get to the fact that she was the only child who could pilot the EVAs at the German Nerve headquarters. This put a ton of pressure on her to perform really well which could explain why she constantly tries to show up the other children once she arrives in Japan. Now we will move on to Shinji, 
who is a very interesting character when it comes to personality disorders. Generally, people believe Shinji to solely represent Cluster C. To refresh your memory, Cluster C is all about anxiety and fearful behaviors. And generally, people consider Shinji to represent avoidant personality disorder. Avoidant personality disorder is all about feeling very socially inept or inadequate. It's about feeling very sensitive when it comes to negative situations. Generally, avoidant personality disorder is all about extreme social anxieties. So of course this would make sense for Shinji. Shinji has entire episodes dedicated to the fact that he finds it very hard to maintain social relationships. There is an episode called Hedgehog's Dilemma where they delve deep into this, in which Shinji gets beaten up on his first day of school, he just feels very disconnected from the people around him, and he believes it's all because of who he is that he deserves to be treated like this. So it does make a lot of sense for Shinji to be associated with avoiding personality disorder. I would say that that is a perfect fit. However, the interesting thing about Shinji's personality disorders is that unlike the other characters, Shinji actually fits with another disorder from an entirely different cluster. Going back to Cluster B about dramatic and emotional disorders, Shinji could represent borderline personality disorder, which is about a ton of patterns of abrupt mood swings, instability in relationships, poor self-image and identity issues, and a lot of behaviors that lead to self-harm and being generally impulsive. A lot of Shinji's possible borderline personality disorder can be shown when he talks about piloting the Evas, specifically in the episode where he's describing that he's going to continue piloting the Evas, not because he wants to, but because he feels obligated to, because it's what other people expect of him. He is also shown to put himself in harm because of his protection of Rei. He feels that if Rei pilots the Eva, she could die at any moment, so he has to do it for her. This is also shown in the episode where Shinji fights the angel on the hill, and I've forgotten which angel it was, but the Eva is low on power because it's been disconnected from the umbilical cable and Shinji puts himself and his classmates at risk because he's just trying to take down the angel instead of running away like he was ordered to. So there are a lot of clear examples of Shinji representing both borderline personality disorder and avoidant personality disorder, which causes kind of a very interesting conflict within this fan theory. As far as possible causes for Shinji's personality disorders, they are incredibly evident within the show, because they are in fact the main theme and conflict of Shinji's character arc. They would be his strained relationship with his father. At a young age, Shinji's father left him, causing Shinji to feel abandoned by him. This made Shinji have to grow up and become self-sufficient at a very young age, and this caused a ton of problems for him. Anyway, now that the video is coming to an end, there is something that I would like to discuss, or just make very clear. As I was doing research for this video, I found out that a common comment in these threads about this subject, there's always someone who says, you know it's just an anime, it's all fake and they're just characters, you know, like, maybe these aren't personality disorders, they're just character flaws and you need to stop reading in too much to this. And I would like to say that I just fully recognize that all of these characters are characters in an anime. They were written by writers, and 
just because they have aspects of their characterization that line up with real life personality disorders, that doesn't necessarily mean that these characters are good representations of those disorders, or that these characters were even intended to represent these disorders in the first place. However, that doesn't stop people like me from feeling represented by these characters when it comes to them representing these disorders that we suffer from. So I would just like to point that out, that this video is very self-aware and all in good fun. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this, then give it a like, and goodbye.